Good afternoon, this is Dr. Mayer, and welcome to Chapter 7. In this chapter, the focus is on internal controls. If we go back to the audit risk model, part of the risk of material misstatement is based upon the control risk. As we are assessing the control risk, our primary focus is to identify specific internal controls established by management to mitigate the inherent risk that we see. It's through this assessment of internal controls that we are able to assess the control risk. Therefore, this chapter focuses primarily on the internal controls that management needs to have in place as they are establishing processes within the organization. First, we identify what an internal control is. An internal control is a process effected by the entity's board of directors, management, and others designed to provide reasonable assurance regarding the achievement of the entity's objectives. The primary focuses of internal controls relate to operations, reporting, and compliance. So you notice that it is effected by the board of directors and management. Internal control structures are a top-down process embedded within the organization. Given that the controls relate to the objectives of the organization, let's focus on a couple of examples of objectives that we might focus on. The preparation of reliable financial information. We want to make sure that all goods that are shipped are accurately billed in the proper period. We want to make sure that invoices are accurately recorded, that items are paid for and paid for only once, that authorized and only authorized sales returns and allowances are reported. The continuation and completeness of accounts receivable is ensured as well as the safeguarding of assets, including records such as accounts receivable. Let's talk about specific control activities. The first being the environment. The environment within the organization needs to have integrity and ethical values. The integrity of the organization is a top-down approach where it starts with the board of directors demonstrating an independence from management and exercise appropriate oversight over internal controls. The control environment establishes an effective structure including reporting lines, appropriate authorities, the commitment to develop and attract and retain competent employees. Certainly human resources is a major component of the control environment. And then finally, holding employees accountable for internal control responsibilities. The second component of what management is responsible for relates to a continued risk assessment. Management clearly needs to identify objectives and assess the risks related to these objectives. They need to analyze these risks and understand how they relate to the objectives, determine how they need to be managed. Certainly a risk assessment includes the potential for fraud relating to achieving these objectives. And then finally, management needs to identify and assess changes that could impact internal controls. Ultimately, what management needs to do related to risk is link the business planning and business strategies with the risk assessment. As business leaders are developing their strategies for future success, embedded in this analysis are the risks associated with these. And it is through this process that management is able to mitigate these risks as the organization is moving towards their goals. Control activities are the policies and processes that is implemented by management to reduce risk. As an example, completing an annual performance review of personnel is a control activity. Establishing transactional controls is another control activity. Physical control, barriers, locks, doors are examples of the physical controls that have been implemented by management. Segregation of duties, where we segregate authorization from recording and custody of assets. This prevents a single individual from having too much control 
over a specific asset. Monitoring is the next component that management is responsible for. Generally speaking, we think about monitoring from the perspective of having internal audit monitor specific activities. While this is true, there are other things that management needs to put in place to monitor activities within the organization. Regularly performing reviews of management and supervisory activities is critical. An example of this might be the continuous monitoring of customer complaints. We also need to establish a monitoring process on a non-routine basis so that we might be able to identify irregular activities that are potentially fraudulent. Let's talk about specific types of internal controls over financial reporting. You notice we identify three types of controls, preventive, detective, and corrective. Preventive controls are aimed at avoiding the occurrence of misstatement. As an example, segregation of duties is a preventive control. Detection is there to detect, to identify things that have already occurred. So when we complete a monthly bank reconciliation, this is a detective control. Corrective controls are there to remedy a situation that might be uncovered by a detective control. For example, the backup of a master file might be used to reconstruct erroneous records. So you notice we talk about backups. Well, guess what? A backup is a type of control that the organization needs to put in place. When we go to our next chapter and talk about controls related to IT, we're going to be talking about how important backups are within the overall internal control structure. So now that we know what management's responsibility is, we as the auditor need to develop an approach related to understanding what these organizations are actually doing. We need to plan this audit by obtaining an understanding of the client, the environment, and the internal controls. In our assessment of the internal control structure of the organization, we are going to assess the control environment. What are the top level controls of the organization? Is the organization ethical? Does the organization have in place a structure such that the audit committee and the board of directors provide oversight to management? what specific control activities, detective controls, preventive controls, does the organization have in their operations? And what monitoring activities do they have in relationship to monitoring the controls that are in place? This is the framework that we use to assess the internal controls established by the organization and is a part of our assessment of the risk of material misstatement. Remember, we can't test controls until we understand the controls. So in the assessment process, we are attempting to understand what these controls are and then develop further audit procedures. Some of these audit procedures are going to be specific test of controls. Some of these audit procedures are going to be our substantive procedures where we are measuring monetary misstatement. The purpose of this chapter and this discussion is to provide a brief summary and introduction in terms of what internal controls are. In our next chapter, we're going to focus on internal controls specifically as they relate to the IT system and IT transactions. I thank you very much for your time and I'm looking forward to our next discussion.